My first word of advice to Christians who have the gift of prophecy is the same advice that I uh, give all Christians, and that is uh, obey God, first and foremost. Um, that's the most important thing to God. Um, having a spiritual gift doesn't make you any different than uh, any other Christian in terms of what God desires of you and expects of you um, in, in terms of obedience. Um, you don't get a pass on it. He's not easier on you because he's given you a gift. If anything, he's harder on you because you have a gift. <laughs> um, It's more important to be Christ-like than it is to have a spiritual gift. The spiritual gifts are all temporary, and having a spiritual gift does not necessarily a more Christ-like Christian make. So uh, I think that's something that both prophets and, and people who hear them need to bear in mind, that they are they're Christians first. They're Christians with the gift of prophecy. And I actually prefer to use that term rather than prophet, because... When people hear that term, all sorts of notions come along with it, and I don't think any of those notions are good. So you're a Christian first. That's how God sees you, and you're a Christian who happens to have a gift. Um, you don't have the gift because you're um, a better saint. <laughs> you have the gift because it was God's will to give you the gift. It was his choice. It's not about you. It's about him. Um, so don't, don't get distracted by the gift. Um, don't just be distracted by the gift from the uh, most important goal and pursuit, the most important pursuit, which is your sanctification. This is what God is focused on. Um, and, uh, if you're obeying him and everything that you know, uh, he will direct you in terms of how to use the gift as well, just as he directs you to do everything else in your life. If you're walking by faith, you're following the Lord's commands and the promptings of his spirit, his direction, the understanding of his will that he's given you, the spiritual gifts are going to be included in that, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, uh, another bit of advice that I would give is to... Be mindful of humility. Uh, it's important for all Christians, but it's probably more important for Christians who have spiritual gifts simply because the potential to become puffed up is higher the more you have. Um, and it's, it's quite easy for um, a believer who has a spiritual gift to get to think more highly of him or herself than, than he or she ought. So that's something to be mindful of, something to be on guard of, uh, against. And, um, you know, if necessary, God will give you something to keep you in check. Because he knows that potential, and he knows that uh, it happens. And uh, the more you have, the more, you know, danger you're in of becoming proud. Um, the Apostle Paul, of course, is an example. He was given much, and God gave him a thorn in the flesh to keep him from getting puffed up because of what he'd received, because he was human. Um, God had his best interest at heart, so uh, if you have the gift of prophecy and God gives you something to keep you in check and it's not pleasant, Understand that it's for your best good, and he knows you better than you know yourself. It's a good thing, even if it's not a pleasant thing. Um, he's done that for me. And uh, while I don't necessarily like the, uh, <laughs> the thorn, as it were, <laughs> or the thorns, I understand why they're there, and I do know that he knows me better than I know myself. And I want to do the right thing, so he knows best. Another bit of advice is to speak the truth in love. It's easy to uh, 
to forget, um, to not give as much consideration to uh, whether we're speaking with truth and love as to, you know, just delivering a message. But that's that's part of it. That's part of delivering the message correctly is speaking the truth in love. And you can speak the truth without speaking the truth in love. I don't happen to think that speaking the truth in love, that love is a strong suit of people who have the prophetic gift, generally. I don't think it is. I think they have ample zeal, but I think they have to pay more attention to speaking the truth in love and to love in general. I think they get uh, indignant uh, about sin, <laughs> and sometimes they can forget to also be loving. Uh, <laughs> so be mindful of that, you know. Um, just like any other Christian, the best way to stay on the right path and to do things the right way is to be mindful of Jesus Christ. If you're looking to him, then you can see whether or not your conduct and your desires and everything else about you is 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 where it needs to be, is looking to him. Um, minimize interference in terms of the delivery of the message. Uh, bring as little attention to yourself as possible. And remember that you are a, an instrument of the Lord, that you are a messenger of the Lord, and you should represent him. Um, the less of you people see the better. They need to be able to hear the message. They need to be paying attention to what you're saying and not you. Um, your appearance, your conduct. Um, by all means, uh, try, do your best to avoid being a stumbling block to other people in terms of their receiving the message. Because that's the most important thing, is that they hear what God wants to say to them. And uh, you need to not be a distraction from that. They're going to have a hard enough time receiving the message anyway. So whatever you can do to make it easier for them to pay attention and not to find fault with you, if they're going to find fault with anything, it needs to be with the message because that's, that's all you do. That's you deliver the message. And if they have a problem, it should be with the message, it should be with God, it shouldn't be with the messenger. Uh, now, they may take issue with the messenger um, unjustly, but they shouldn't have a legitimate reason to. Um, don't get discouraged. Uh, anybody who has the gift of prophecy knows that that comes along with it. When God starts sending prophets to his people, it's generally too late for the majority. Most people aren't willing to listen. And it's not about the reception, but doing the will of God. Uh, you need to find your comfort in that. And just know that you're doing the right thing. You're doing what God wants you to do. And... Uh, it's no different than anything else. The use of spiritual gifts is no different than any other sort of uh, faith. So you're not doing it for reception from other people. You can't make them receive the truth. That's between them and God, and uh, you're just to deliver the message, and that's what God wants you to do. I think those are the main, the main things that I would pass on to people with the spiritual gift. Um, with everything else, as with everything else, if your focus is being obedient to the Lord and doing his will, he'll direct you in how he wants you to do whatever it is he wants you to do. And that includes the use of spiritual gifts. Uh, just because you know the truth and you have something to say doesn't mean that it's the right time to say it or that it's the right way to say it. It's the right person to say it to. 
you can deliver a right message in a wrong way, um, through wrong means, with a wrong spirit, uh, the wrong time to the wrong people. So again, you need to have faith about it. You need to know when it's the right time. Um, and for other people, Christians who don't have the prophetic gift, beware of anyone who calls themselves a prophet, claims to have the gift of prophecy, who's delivering you a message of peace and safety at this time. Because that's not what God is saying to his people. <laughs> what God is saying to his people right now, and at all the messages that you hear from prophets should be in agreement with this. To the people who are doing what is right, he wants them to continue. Just keep going. Persevere. Keep going. Hold fast what you have. Continue to do what is right. And for the people who aren't, repent. <laughs> That's it. Um, repent. Judgment is coming. Um, return to me. And people who are preaching that, you know, that everything is okay, that, that there's a great revival coming, that the Lord is coming back any minute, um, that God's blessing is on, on most of us. Unfortunately, it's, it's not true. We know, I mean, we, we know from the scriptures that usually the prophetic message is is bad for most people. <laughs> um, because when God starts sending prophets, it's at a time when the people aren't doing, they're not listening to him. And that's why he sends a trumpet, because you're not listening. People who have been listening all along don't need a trumpet. What do you need a trumpet for? You already know this. <laughs> God will show you what he wants you to see. You know, if you're obeying God, he shows you stuff. He shows you what you need to know including things that are going to happen. And he may use somebody with a prophetic gift to, to give you, you know, encouragement or to give you insight into things that are getting ready to happen. But uh, people who are being obedient to God, who have a good heart towards him, who genuinely desire to do his will in all things, they're going to be in the know, <laughs> as they say. They're going to be in the know about what's going to happen. And the people who aren't, they're in danger of not being in the know. They're in danger of listening to all the... The people who are telling them that there's there's peace and safety <laughs> and that God's gonna bless them and make them rich. Uh, beware of those people. They're unprofitable. They're not prophets. They, if they are prophets, I, I don't know. They maybe they're deceived, but don't listen to them. Whether they are, whether they aren't, that's not the message that God wants His people to hear at this time. Um. And people who genuinely have the gift of prophecy, they should all agree with one another. Uh, they should all be delivering the same message, maybe in slightly different ways, maybe with more information in a certain about a certain thing or what have you. But they're all delivering the same message. They're consistent. Uh, just like the Old Testament prophets were consistent. It's the same message over and over and over again. The gift hasn't changed. So if you're not hearing repent... <laughs> You know, or if you're not hearing persevere, then you're probably not hearing from the Lord. So that would be my little word of advice to people who don't have the gift of prophecy, because um, if you're on YouTube and you're watching this video, chances are you've watched other videos of people who have or profess to have the gift of prophecy. And uh, there are a dime a dozen. You can find all sorts of stuff on YouTube. You can find people telling you what you want to hear. Uh, but uh, I think that's important for you to know what God is actually saying to his people right now. I think a lot of Christians already know that. Um, they're probably not the people who God is sending the prophets to, <laughs> would be my guess. I think they, they probably already know that. Um, so that's my word of exhortation to prophets as well as to people who don't have that gift. May the Lord use it to bless you.